us a lot of really cool new electronics, new gadgets that most people had never seen before, such as video cassette recorders. Unfortunately, the 1980s also bought us some of the worst. I mean, the, some of the designs that we saw were just beyond belief. See, the belief to people back in this 80s were that individual components were better. People were trying to get away from these all-in-one units that had the the tuner and the amplifier and the tape deck, everything all in one box. It was believed that if it looked like components, it would be better quality. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. Enter this Sanyo System 240 piece of crap. I don't even know if this thing works, so we're going to plug this thing in and see what this thing does. But here we have what looks to be two separate components. And, uh, I mean, they went about it the right way. They put them in a separate little metal box, and you got external, external uh, plugs to plug them into each other. And then they went and did this. The tuner does not have a power supply in it. It gets its power supply from the secondary of the transformer in the amplifier. 18 volts AC, 200 milliamps maximum to power the tuner. So I'm asking myself, what was the point in putting the tuner into a separate box? Other than the fact that you could market it as a component system and trick the public into thinking that they were somehow getting a high quality device. High quality and this device don't go together. And I haven't even shown you the tape deck for this thing yet. Shall I show you the tape deck? Okay, well there's the tape deck. The tape deck's got a power supply in it as well. It also has one of these outlets on the back so you can you can take your choice. Do you want to power your tuner up from the tape deck? Or do you want to power your tuner up from the amplifier? Or maybe this was to power up the turntable. You got a beat cancellation switch on the back here. That's just to change the carrier frequency for the bias recording or the bias for the recorder. That's to minimize interference to AM radio. But take a look at this thing. So you got two tape decks. The amount of plastic in this thing for the age of this is unbelievable. Most manufacturers, when this was made, were, were still turning out good quality, you know, well-built machines, but not the Sanyo. Take a look inside these cassette compartments here. Yeah, that's real good quality. That's the playback side. This is the record side. The head on this thing looks like it's had a fair bit of wear on it too. Oh yeah. It's starting to show its wear. You can see, if I zoom in here, you can see the wear that's on that head. And if we look at the other side, again, that head's got a fair bit of wear on it. But just really very, very low quality uh, units. But we can still learn something from these, so we're going to take these things apart, take a look at them, see what makes them tick, see if there's anything wrong with it, and see if there is something wrong with it, whether we can go about uh, getting it going. I'm going to do this in a couple different videos. I'm going to do one video of this one. We'll be looking at the amplifier and the tuner, and I'll do a separate one just for the tape deck. Now, if you guys remember my universal connection cord that I made up before when I put it in my bench test amplifier, I brought this nice two-pair speaker wire down, and uh, I've got the black and the green tied together because these are my common ground. So I can tie these both down to the ground lines, and this allows me to use my bench speakers that I've got 
on the bench here for testing other amplifiers that all I have to do is just make sure that I have the speaker switch on my bench amp turned off or the power turned off and my Sony test amp is out of the circuit so I don't have to worry about damaging it that way I can use the same speakers to uh, test other amplifiers out here so we're gonna hook this thing up turn it on and see if it works once again Samuel wants to play like the big boys they put a separate power switch like as if that power switch really does anything yeah it'll turn off the tuner but uh, what's the point because the tuner is powered by the amplifier so it's not like I can turn on the power to the tuner without turning on the amplifier it's controlled by the power supply in the amplifier so there's not really any point in having that power switch there other than it allows you to shut off the basically shut off the radio if you're not using it but uh, is it going to save you any power no because the power supply is still running inside the uh, the main amplifier uh, well lights work on it let's just see whether we actually have any sound when I turn up the volume what do you know this thing actually uh, this thing actually works So, we've got a speaker switch on it, right? So, you can plug headphones into this, but again, this is an extremely basic system, and uh, somehow, you know, people bought these things and uh, I think they thought they were getting more, you know, getting a higher quality system than they were. Very, very basic. Let's open this thing up and just uh, see what type of amplifier is in this. What do you know? It's got discrete parts. Not much to it. It's a very, very basic, it's gonna be class AB design. But here's our amplifier section. So we can have some fun with this. We can play around with the bias and and uh, I can plant some uh, faults into this thing, I'm sure. Uh, it's going to be a real fun one to work on, though, because there's no hatch on the bottom. you got to take the whole circuit board out. you got to take this whole unit apart to get at it. But here's our power transformer. Not much to this. You know, there's not much power on this unit. I'm going to guess that this unit is maybe 20 watts per channel. Maybe 30. I have to look up the specs on those transistors. But it's not going to be much power. And... Uh, not much of a heat sink in this thing either. I mean, very, very minimal design. Um, there's one IC in here, it looks like. There's all transistors, which is uh, something you don't see much of now. Most of the amplifiers, even back in the 80s when this was built, this was built right at the time where power modules were the big thing, where you'd have just a, an amplifier module that uh, had all the circuitry inside it. Here we've got all discrete components. We've got a, a preamp IC, which would be for a phono preamp over here. And uh, our volume control in the back here. Input selector switch. And just a couple transistors at each uh, side. There's not really much that we really need to go over on this thing. Other than maybe I'll put some faults in it and we'll do some fault finding. Okay, so what I've done is I've deliberately opened one of the emitter follower resistors and what I've done is I've intentionally simulated an open resistor so that you'll see what type of sound this will produce now if you have an output transistor that fails it will usually always burn up one of these output one of these emitter follower resistors as well but uh, this is what the type of sound you would expect on the one channel because I've only done it to one channel our sound is good but I go to the other channel hear that Severe distortion. If we uh, put our scope on to our one of our test points down here, we can take a look at the level. If we look at our, our scope here, you'll see that the right channel is uh, where are we here. A nice clean signal. If I took a look at the same test point on the channel that's, that's bad see that so now we can start doing voltage measurements here to see what's going on 
So we take our voltage meter and we can just start looking. We can start probing around and looking at different voltages to see what's, what's happening here. Now as I probe around in my amplifier, we're normally going to find, we look at our emitter follow resistors, we're never, normally going to find the voltage is, is pretty low. You know, 0 0.1 volts, 0 0.01, etc. It's going to be very low because they're grounded. One side is grounded. In the case of the one where I opened it up intentionally, well, we're going to find a huge voltage on one side. So there we've got our, our minus 0.04 and our minus 0.04, 0.03. The same here. When I go to this other side to measure it, oh, where was that? And we got 14 volts because this resistor here is open. And that's what's causing our major distortion. Like that. This resistor has gone open. So that's how you can troubleshoot one of these type of amplifiers. That's just one of the basic things. There's many things that can go wrong. Typically if you had um, a resistor that was open, the reason why the resistor is open is because the transistor would be associated it has, with it has shorted. So for example, if this transistor here had shorted emitter to collector, it would have burned out this resistor. If this transistor here is shorted, it would have burned out this resistor. Typically, if these transistors fail, they're usually going to fail in a pair. So you quite often find both of the emitter follower resistors are open. So we're going to replace this. In this case, I'm just going to reconnect the connection I took off, and you'll see the things will return to normal. So we'll shut off the power here. And then you'll see that the amplifier is once again working because we have the correct bias. That's the very basic things on here. Um, I could plant a bunch of different faults on it, but uh, other faults I'm going to plant on here would be destructive. I'd end up actually blowing parts. So that wasn't uh, the intention was to blow things up and fix it. It was just to give you guys uh, a quick a quick sample of what uh, an incorrect bias or a missing voltage will cause. So you can go through with your meter and, and just take a look across resistors and normally because these are a very low ohm resistor you won't see any voltage difference across them. When you measure across the resistor itself there should be virtually nothing across them. When it's operating properly we've got nothing across these resistors. Voltage to ground again. It's it's in the it's in the millivolt range. Minus point zero four. You know, minus point zero four. But if one of them goes open, you'll find a high voltage on the other side because it's 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 direct bias to the power supply. So. Um, and again, what will make these resistors, resistors go open is if you have a transistor that shorts, they'll go open. On this little amplifier here, the speaker's protected by a couple fuses over here. These are your speaker protection fuses. Typically, if a speaker protection fuse is blown on one of these things or any of these cheap uh, basic amplifiers like this, there's a good chance that the transistors are also going to be blown. So um, keep that in mind when you work on stuff like this. Um, the stuff, again, these things are they're actually fairly reliable. So uh, if output transistors are blown, it's generally as a result from speaker leads being shorted or being driven just way too, way too loud. I always try to give these uh, units a new home. You never know, somebody could be looking just for a basic system and this system would suit them just fine. But I don't need to do anything to this. This one's working, so let's take a look at this tuner and see what the guts of this one looks like inside. So here's the inside of the tuner. As again, there's not much to it. Very small little board in here. More, more space taken to string the dial cord. Look at that. I mean, the dial cord on this thing wraps around the tuning shaft. With the, with it even adds a nice counterweight on here so you can spin it. Not that it spins very far, but you can see the, you can see the tuning dial here. Our tuning dial goes all the way across here for the pointer. Goes over to here, dial cord down and underneath where it wraps around the actual bottom of the variable capacitor for tuning so the, 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 the um, 
pulley will be underneath here and then back around this way which would make this thing pretty difficult if you wanted to actually pull the board to do any work on it you'd have to pull it out as part of this assembly with this plastic sub chassis otherwise you would uh, have to re-thread the dial cord but there's nothing really going on in this thing it's got a couple of ICs and I just wanted to show you guys what the inside of this basic tuner looks like there's no there's no power supplies or anything it's just uh, it's got a you know, I guess it's got a rectifier got four diodes in here and filter capacitor there's no transformer or anything they saved the price of putting an extra transformer in here by putting the transformer in the main unit so very very basic AM FM very basic AM FM tuner got a little signal meter on here not much uh, to this thing we're not going to hear anything on AM. so polluted with stuff like the ballast for the light I turn the light out a little bit less noise but uh, all these electronic devices that we love now like uh, compact fluorescent bulbs well even regular fluorescent lights now they've pretty much eliminated the use of the iron core magnetic ballast and everything now is in favor of these solid-state electronic ballasts that and ADSL telephone lines they throw so much noise on the AM band it's, it's no wonder that the AM band is uh, pretty much you know radio stations are abandoning it but uh, anyway that's this little basic tuner inside we're going to put the thing together now and uh, put this thing up on Craigslist for free Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.